Jaisalmer, the border district of Rajasthan, where the daily life is very hard due to uneven geographical conditions. The entire area is either surrounded by dense desert or is absolutely desolate. There's hardly any greenery except a couple of small trees and bushes. The winters are severe and nerve-rattling while the summers are scorching. Rain in this area is entirely dependent on the mercy of God. The erstwhile Maharaja, Maharaval Jaisaldev, laid the foundation stone of this fort on 12th July, 1156, after the Mughal invasion of former capital, Lodrava, in the year 1025. Let me tell you that the rulers of Jaisalmer believed in communal harmony. That is why the followers of all religions were treated equally. Those who believed in Jainism were held in high esteem. The Jain community had some special characteristics. Those adhering to Jainism were skilled traders and they used to provide financial assistance to the Maharaja. Secondly, these traders had made huge fortunes by virtue of their razor-edge intellect and hard work. Thirdly, the followers and preachers of Jainism were loyal and dedicated to their religion. Invasions by the Mughals had caused huge damage to the Jain temples. However, when the clever priest of these temples got an inkling of these invasions, they had surreptitiously removed precious statues from these temples and hid them at a certain place under the sand. When the invaders, having done loot and sabotage, left the place, the priest brought back these statues from the places where these were hidden. These glorious Jain temples are built inside the sonar fort of Jaisalmer. You must be thinking why the rulers of Jaisalmer allowed the Jain temples inside the fort, though they themselves were not Jains. As a matter of fact, the Maharaja got worried when he came to know that the preachers of Jainism had made up their mind to leave the princely state for fear of Mughal invasions. The people of Jain community were the pivot of trade activities and had hugely contributed to treasury of the princely state. In such a scenario, how could the Maharaja afford to let them go? The king allowed the followers of Jainism to build glorious temples inside the fort compound. It took almost 250 years of hard work to make Jain temples the unique examples of incredible architecture. I would like to tell you that the workers of Silawat Muslim family have exhibited their talent in the most admirable way. There are 10 huge Jain temples in the area around Jaisalmer. They were built after the 14th century. These are the temples of Jain preachers such as Chintamani Parshwanath, Rishabhdev, Chandra Prabhu, Shantinath, Sambhavanath, Kuntunath, Mahavir Swami and Simandar Swami. Join me as I introduce you to the beauty of the Jain temples. Look at the entrance of the gate of the temple. It is just amazing. Just can't believe that the artists made such a beautiful entrance by their hands. Unbelievable. Just keep watching. Marvelous. Every particle of this place will generate a sense of excitement in you. One does not feel like going ahead. Just stay put and keep gazing. Look intently. Magnificent dome. My God. So much beautiful, attractive and imposing. Look at this dome closely. Anyone will be captivated by the matchless architecture. I have really enjoyed it. Do you see this unique architecture? Attractive statues of gods. Statues are everywhere. Even at the top of the poles. 
just can't believe that these statues have been carved on stones. The minute engravings make me believe as if the entire architecture has bowed down here and giving itself airs and walking affectedly. Now I tell you something surprising. There are 6,666 statues here. I have one more information for you. Almost 2,700 Jain families gave their assistance in building these temples. Prominent among them are Ranka, Daga, Sakalecha, Bhansali, Chopra, Kothari and Lunia etc. There are a lot of things to see in the underground of the temples. Lachu Maharaj will tell us a lot about it, but you will have to wait a little. First, I would like to tell you about the statues of the Tirthankars installed inside the temples. The oldest statue is that of Chintamani Parshvanath, perhaps 2,073 years old. It is made of sand, but you can see a white glare. Yes, you have seen it rightly. In fact, purest pearls have been engraved on this statue. It is said that the statue in the Jain temple of Lodrava was brought here through a tunnel after the Mughal invasion. There are 108 statues of Lord Parshwanath in the Chandra Prabhu temple which is situated atop the temple. These statues in such a large number are unique in themselves. They are made of white marble. In the temple of Lord Adinath, there are statues as small as a piece of rice or sesame. This temple is called Jo Jitna Mandir, meaning that it is as small as a piece of barley. This statue cannot be seen with naked eye. You can see it with the help of lens. The most striking thing here is that this small piece of stone has 999 statues in it. Now I will show you two most unique things of this temple. See the figure which looks like the mouth of a cow. How brilliantly it has been chiseled. Can you tell me what is it? Anyway, I will tell you. What you see is a statue shaped like the mouth of a cow. It is couched like a rabbit. Its paw is like that of a lion. Mouth resembles a crocodile while it has a hood like that of a snake. The tongue resembles a cow and the eye is like that of a fish. Its feathers are like that of a peacock and we can see a duck in the middle of the mouth. I was stunned to see so many figures in just a single statue. It is indeed wonderful. The holy water used for washing these statues flows out of this gomuk. You can see another figure right in the middle of the dome. Glance at it. I'll explain about it. 
the figure has one head and five busts. These five busts symbolize five cardinal principles of Jainism, namely truth, non-violence, non-stealing, celibacy and non-possession. The artist has made this statue in such a way that its head appears to be connected with bust, whatever angle you look at it from. Are you not wonderstruck? This man is Lachhu Maharaj. He will take us around the underground. We will follow him, but we will have to be careful while passing through the narrow stairs. Vast reservoir of knowledge is available here. This storehouse of knowledge about Jainism was founded by Sri Jinbhadra Suriji Maharaj in the 14th century. It remains open daily from 9 a.m. in the morning to 12 o'clock in the afternoon for people adhering to Jainism. प्राचीन ग्रंथों को गुजरात के सिद्धपुर पाटन से जैसल में लाया गया और इस तलग्रह में रखा गया। पहला तलग्रह 12 फीट लंबा, 7 फीट चौड़ा ये कमरा है। इसके अंदर सेकंड तलग्रह है जो 12 फीट लंबा, 7 फीट चौड़ा हॉल है। इसके अंदर तीन एलिमिनर है। उसके अंदर एक आधा दरवाजा और खुलता है। उसमें तीसरा तलग्रह है जिसमें छह एलिमिनरों के अंदर 438 तार Lachhu Maharaj tells us that a lot of documents are available here which were handwritten on palm leaves. These valuable documents were brought to this temple on bullock carts to keep them safe from the cruel eyes of the invaders. The 438 boxes kept here contain knowledge written on the palm leaves. All these handwritten books are in Prakrit, Pali and Ardhmalini languages, encapsulating rules and teachings related to Jainism. There is a model of Kalpavriksha, the mythical wish-fulfilling tree. Also available here is the Navkar Mantra of Jainism written in golden ink along with pictures of Panchakalyanakas, names of Jain festivals celebrating five stages in the life of Jinendra. Statues embedded with diamonds are displayed for darshan, meaning public viewing. Do you see it? It's a victory flag embroidered on cloth and is also called Sarvasiddhi Yantra. It is known to be 300 years old. You can see here green emerald statue of Lord Mahavir. How enchanting the statue is! The clothes of Dada Muni Jean Datta Suri have also been displayed for darshan in the underground. It is said that when Jin Datta Suri was cremated, his body burnt to ashes but his clothes remained unburnt. These holy clothes were first brought to Ajmer from Siddhapur, Patan in Gujarat. And thereafter they were brought to Jaisalmer in the 12th century. This charisma of architecture was created by the workers of Silavat Muslim family of Jaisalmer. The several generations of this family worked for it. Their hard work resulted in the matchless legacy for the followers of Jainism. The Jain temples of Jaisalmer are a unique confluence of brilliant carvings and precious statues. Not only Jains, but also people of all religions throng here to see these temples. It is natural for them to come here, for these temples are the glory of the whole world. The skilled hands of great artists let their hammer and chisel dance in such a way that everyone is captivated by it. Our salute to the artists who built this grand temple.